So, welcome back to another episode of Rough Restos. Um, this time we're on something different today. Now, this hasn't yet made it onto the channel, but this is one of my new purchases. So, this is a 2005 E60 530D. Uh, now, I think I might have mentioned in the previous video about some amateur golf. That will soon be on the channel, but not quite yet. So, this is the current placement daily, and of course, I can't leave it standard because. That's, no, I can't leave it standard. So. I put up one of the mods I've done um, on one of these 60 pages a short while ago about reversing lights and people quite like the idea of them and want to know how to do it. So today we are going to show you how to do this. Oh, yes. So to do this we're going to need some parts. Now mainly we're going to need some LEDs. So what I use is these little Chinese 10 watt LED cobs. Um, I find actually they're quite reliable. Um, I bought them direct from China, or used to know years ago. Um, and we'll get like 10 of them for like three quid, I think. So basically nothing. Um, so you want to stock up on a few of them, but we're gonna need six of these. Uh, so 10 watt, uh, I think these are cool white, just cheap and simple. Now with these, we're just gonna heat sink. So I've gone and got an actual proper heat sink for this one. So we've got an aluminum heat sink here. Mine is, well, doesn't matter too much. The bigger, the better, but mine's 60, the main measurement we're looking for is at least 60 mil by 20 mil. So you're going to need two bits at a 60 by 20. Uh, the deeper the better, the more fins the better, but that should do us absolutely fine here. So heat sink, which has got at least two 60 by 20 sections to it. Uh, now I'm using some 5 amp buck regulators here to better adjust the current and voltage. Now I wouldn't normally do that. On my other cars that well, I've done these mods to as well, I normally just use a 1 ohm 3 watt resistor. And that, I've never had a problem with that, they've always been perfect. But I'm not sure if the Beamer runs at a slightly higher voltage, so more around 15 volts when charging. And I want to, because this heatsink isn't as big as some other ones, um, I want to just make sure I want to prolong the life of the LEDs. So these are rated at 12 volts and I think about 900 milliamps. But ideally, they should be run a bit less than 12 volts because pushing it. Um, and we obviously want to restrict them to run at 900 milliamps, ideally, no more per chip. This is where these come in, because with these we can adjust the voltage and the current coming out of them, no matter what's coming in, essentially. So I've got two of them, so two, I've got two 5 amp ones because 3 amp might be a bit too tight. These are only rated at 0.9 amps, so 2.7 amps are free. Chinese equipment, if it's rated at 3 amps, it's probably not suitable for 3 amps, so we'll go for the 5 amp ones just to be safe. Or a 1 ohm, 1, uh, 1 ohm 3 watt resistor would normally do the case just fine, but I'm going to use these for the sake of this video. So heatsink, LEDs, buck regulator or resistor, and then you want some soldering equipment, some cutting equipment, a bit of cable, some heat shrink, and that kind of such. Uh, I think we'll get on how to, yeah, let's let's get on how to remove the lights a minute. So as you can see, I've already done one. I've done a little trial on these before committing to building a new set. So to remove the um, tail lights pretty easy you want to pull out your um back panels for each behind each tail light with your panels removed you'll find here you've got one two three there and four eight mil nuts to remove undo the nuts and the headlights just pop out um i tend to take off the back light cluster rather than plug it but whatever works for you pop it off pop headlight out Tell that, and if you put both on the desk, and I'll be back in two seconds. With the lights removed, what you're looking to do is where the reverse light was before, you notice there's a load of plastic that comes up because it was just a big enough hole for the bulb to fit through before. Now, in order for us to fit through, well, these are it's one of my prototypes, one of these LED setups, we need more space than that. So, we need to open up the hole, kind of. Like that down there, using some grips or some pliers to break away the excess plastic. So you can get your grips in there or something. It's actually really easy just to break off the um, excess plastic. It used to go be part of reflector. So you want to maybe one hand this knot, but yeah. So like that. You just want to break off the little bits are in your way. So we got access down there to put our bits of our heatsink. So you break off the bits there. Uh, yours won't be dented like mine is there. That's because I had to remove the old ones and they 
a bit of a nightmare. Um, that will then leave us a nice big slot where we can see the lens for the reverse lights and we can build our reverse lights and get them fitted in there. Let's crack on with that now then. So that's M2 sorted, ready to go. So I best now cut up my heatsink. Obviously if you've got heatsink the right size you won't need to cut it up, but I'm going to run a grinder through this and make them into two small bits a second. So, so our little chunk of heatsink. Uh, three LEDs to go on it. Just like that. So next step would be to secure the LEDs for heatsink. So what you want is a thermal glue or similar to secure them to the heatsink itself. So let's just quickly do that now. Whilst that's setting, I'm going to warm up the soldering iron a minute and we'll start to tin the LEDs to get them soldered up. Uh, one important note I haven't mentioned yet is these LEDs actually have a polarity. So you see, like they say positive, positive, positive. Make sure they're all on the same side. It'll make your life a lot easier now. If they're not, then you struggle a tiny bit. So let's get some solder on these ones to start with. So once you've done a terrible job soldering them up like I have here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to test them. So, grab a 12-watt battery, use your car or anything, and just put it on and see. Oh wow. Yes, bright. Very, very bright. And same in this one. Yep. Unbelievably bright. So we've got two of these that work. Perfect. Now, Let's have a look at these spark regulators. So fairly simple, we should have an in and out. In on that side, positive, negative. Out on that side, positive, negative. Let's get a little screwdriver. Now this one here is screw terminals. Um, to be fair, the ones with a uh, solder terminal would probably be better for long term use in the car. But this will still be fine. Get both of these connected up. Out negative on that side. So we've hooked up some power there. We want to grab our meter. We want to put it on volts DC and attach our probes to the output. So 11.25 volts there. We want to adjust the inner potentiometer down to around about 11 volts. The way the screwdriver fits properly. There we go. Back up to 11 a bit. Yeah, it's about 11 volts. And there we go. That should. Now we've saved our LEDs because we're only running at 11 volts, not 12 volts. They shouldn't be able to draw any more current than we need. Perfect. That's um, working nice and brightly there. So let's get them fitted in the unit. So what I've done here is I've crimped a male spade connector onto the positive and a female negative. And we'll do the opposite in the car in a moment. So that's a simple way of connecting it up. So let's get these fitted into the lights a minute. Right, looks like we need to take off part of the corner a tiny bit to actually get these to fit in. Just like that. So take the top corner off of the smidge and that'll do it just fine. Do that to both of them. With both units slotted in the lights, the next step is a bit fiddly, but we need to hot glue these in place. Now you can use whatever you want. I'd for hot glue because it just it stays there and it's fairly easy to remove the lights again afterwards, so it just makes sense. But to do this, obviously you're gonna want to get them positioned up central-ish with the lens at the back. So it's a bit fiddly, but it is possible. So I'll go do that in a second. So that's the modules badly glued in. Now, you want to take your lamp assembly for your uh, tail light. You've got the connectors here for reverse light. The inner one, which is the one with a single track, is the positive. So cramp, crimp, cramp, crimp a um, female spade on there and a male spade on the negative this time. 
you can fit the lamp holder now back in to the light like so join the female and the male and vice versa And then you probably want a cable tie or glue this little module just onto the fitting somewhere. So I'm going to go for there. A little bit of glue on that for now. Um, although, actually, I might just cable tie it so it can be, it's just easier to remove in the future because it will be need to be removed every time this is removed. So cable tie is going to be easier. Yeah. I'll cable tie that onto there a minute, strap them down, done. All right, your two lights fitted back in. You know, should look something like that. A little LEDs in there. And then module cable tied back up here. Uh, ideally, you'd put a bit, big bit of heat shrink over that, but that's fine for now. So I guess the one last thing to do now would be to test if they actually work. That would be a really good start, wouldn't it? Let's see what happens. Oh, yes. Ha. Great success. So you probably can't tell much from the video, um, especially the GoPro is terrible at picking this kind of thing up. But yeah, you really can't tell from the video how bright that is. That's illuminating the workshop exceptionally well. Right. Reverse. Nice. And there we go. Great success. So. If you happen to have enjoyed this video and found it informative, then why not subscribe for some more? Um, there will be some more on the Beamer, probably some coding bits and various small bits. Um, not as much as obviously the Twin Turbo Capri or the 25 Turbo Mark II or any other projects that go on or the Range Rover Turbo Technics. But yeah, drop me a comment, give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe for more. With any luck, I'll see you again next time. Cheers! Oh.